It's about 12.15 on April 3rd, 2023. We're in the village of Rouse's Point, and the sign says Rouse's Point, New York, Amtrak. And there's the Welcome Center, the museum now part of the village, and a very, very busy railroad station many, many years ago. Camera's pointing north, and we're going to turn and point south because this is the direction that the Amtrak train will be arriving for the first time since 2020 when the pandemic uh, hit its course. Uh, Amtrak service was ceased between Albany, New York, and Montreal. And as of today, it'll be reopened at approximately 3.54. It'll be arriving in Plattsburgh, and then shortly before 4.30, They'll be arriving here in Rouse's Point. So we've been told that some village officials will be available here and will greet the folks from Amtrak. I'm hoping to have Judy Castein here covering that. I'll be in Plattsburgh. I'll be adding to this video a little bit of before the train arrives in Plattsburgh at four o'clock I have a county legislature meeting so I will not be able to be there when the train arrives at 354 but uh, the intent is to get a little video before that happens so with that said we're gonna next uh, record from Plattsburgh and hopefully we'll have Judy Castine here in Rouse's Point when the Amtrak and their officials arrive here and the service is restored we are about a mile from the Canadian border It's about 20 after 3 right now, and as I stated earlier, we're going to have to depart before the train gets here, but we, we were able to find a caretaker, Roger Morse. Yes, that's correct. And uh, this is a, a brand new job for you because the track is just opening up again. That is correct. <laughs> yep. Yep. A brand new start. A good start. Yep. Okay. So we're here in, in Plattsburgh, and uh, you've got a schedule for when it's coming here? Yes, uh, daily uh, train 68, which is a southbound train out of Montreal, uh -huh. is scheduled to arrive at 2.42 p.m. In Plattsburgh. In Plattsburgh. So that would be probably around 2 o'clock or earlier in Rouse's Point because you have to clear customs. Right? That is correct. All right, that's in the afternoon, p.m. Yeah. Right, and then the northbound train coming out of New York City is scheduled to arrive here at 3.54 p.m. Now, where the where in heck are they going to meet, or they won't run into each other? There are several sightings. Uh, there is one in South Plattsburgh, is, and uh, one train will have to go to a siding before it comes into Plattsburgh, or vice versa. The one coming up from Westport will have to go to a siding, and then wait, because there is a siding I think also just north of uh, Westport, the Westport station. I was so, thinking it'd probably be closer to there because they're close right. to an hour apart. Here, it so. certainly is. And it takes an hour from Westport to Plattsburgh. Oh, really? Yes. So, yep. So they've kind of squished the schedule a little <laughs> bit closer together than what it had been in the past. Okay. Yep. So this is starting here on this April 3rd, and it runs seven days a week, right? Seven days a week. Now, is the place online to buy tickets? Yes. Uh, you can go online to Amtrak.com, or you can call the 1-800 number, 1-800-USA-RAIL which is 1-800-872-7245. Okay. Now, this is a, a seven-day-a-week run, so you got to show up here for a few hours, seven days a week. So it's that not like it's a nine-to-five job, right. five no, days a week. No, it isn't. Uh, I'll probably be arriving approximately 2 p.m. Uh, every day and then departing uh, approximately a half hour after the northbound departs. So probably about 4, 35 o'clock. Okay, now we're inside here. Is this normally locked up? Uh, yes, until I arrive at 2 o'clock, it is locked up, so there's no entry until I actually get, physically get here on the, at the station. So if somebody has a ticket, once you get here, they can wait inside here if the weather's... That is correct. For inclement weather, we do have several benches outside that people can sit and wait for the south, or their train. Right, south or north. Right, or north, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, so you're saying this is a... A job that your wife once had, right? Yeah, she, she worked here for about 14 years uh, working for Amtrak, and um, she decided it was time for her to retire. And since I just recently retired from my full-time employment, I 
picked it up. Oh. So it kind of worked out for worked us. Worked out good. Kind of keep it in the family, so to speak. Right, right. Okay. Anything else we should know, Roger, before while we're waiting for that train? Uh, not that I'm aware of. All right. Not at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, the congresswoman has arrived, and uh, a lot of the cameras are around her, and we've got dignitaries everywhere we look, and we turn around, we find the most dignitary person here, former mayor in the village of Champlain, grew up in Rouse's Point, and now here in the uh, Plattsburgh City Council. It's called the council, right? Yeah, it is called. <laughs> yeah, I miss Champlain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's your name? <laughs> Jeff Moore. Jeff Moore, yeah. yeah. Your brother Brian is a town councilor. Your father Stanley was a longtime judge and counselor, and so politics are in your blood. Huh? You just can't uh, stay away. I couldn't stay away. <laughs> Get, <laughs> about, getting closer to retirement now, though. <laughs> now, we were talking off camera, and uh, we we're reminiscing about growing up and hearing all those trains in Rouse's Point. So, uh, hearing the Amtrak come through will be a welcome sound here in Plattsburgh, won't it? Well, yeah. I we used to think they were a nuisance back then because they'd stop us from getting across the railroad tracks. <laughs> they were switching all the time. But, uh, oh, yeah, that was that was really great. I lo loved growing up there. Yeah, they had a heck of a lot of tracks there at that d &H station, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Well, they'd be switching all night, but you got used to that. For a while, I lived right next to the tracks. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't think I could handle it now. Yeah. <laughs> Brother-in-law Benny Arno and his wife Brenda, they live right next door to the tracks there. So they, I, I, I'm sitting at home in my living room and I'm probably four or five miles as the crow flies from Coopersville and I can hear them going by there. So I'll, I'll bet you Benny and Brenda don't miss too many. Probably <laughs> not. Yeah, they go right close to where your brother Brian lives, so they got to sound the, the horn when they every time they approach a road, so yeah, you can hear them. So, so having a train in your backyard or a nice experience, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it was. I mean, half the people in town worked at the, on the railroad. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Were, I think there were five. Uh, we had a roundhouse there and yeah. all so, kinds of tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Between the Central Vermont and the Canadian National, the D&H and the NJ and the Rutland, it was a busy little place. Yeah, those are the good old days, <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> All right, look at this crowd here. I wish I could stick around, but uh, we've, got to, we've got to get going. The chamber is well represented. The, the mayor of Plattsburgh is here. The town the supervisor from Plattsburgh is here. And as we said, the Congresswoman Stefanik is here. Uh, and we're going to have to uh, hit the road very shortly. All right, we're just going to get a little bit of this because, as we said, we've got to hit the road. And we'll get a little bit of uh, Congresswoman Stefanik. All the media setting up. Don't want to get in Tom Hollick's way. He takes it very personal when you get in Tom's way, boy. <laughs> Set. Great. Well, it's great to be here in Plattsburgh today. This is a very big day for the North Country economy, for transportation. The Adirondack Line is something we've been working on since the start of COVID, really, to make sure as we're reopening the economy, uh, making sure that all of the resources we have are fully operating. Uh, I was so pleased that after speaking with the president of Amtrak the day after they announced that this would reopen, today is the first day that the train is in service. So we're looking forward to greet the passengers who are exiting the train and sending off the passengers who are getting uh, on the train. This has been a partnership with the North Country Chamber of Commerce with local elected officials. And I will tell you, out of so many issues that have been, that are brought to the, the attention of my office, we got so many calls and outreach, both leading up to this, asking for when the opening was happening, but also after the announcement saying people are so glad of the certainty and just having this resource back who are used to taking this train on a regular basis. So good news for the North Country and appreciate you all being here today. What were some of the challenges in getting the, the line reinstated? It's a great question, Pat. So initially, uh, at the start of COVID, as you recall, so much was shut down, and we've had to incrementally work as quickly as possible, whether it's reopening the northern border, whether it's getting rid of some of those app requirements that were signed in the Arrive Can app. This was 
also staffing challenges. So as you go to small businesses, manufacturers, any organization, one of the top concerns I hear is staffing. That was the case for Amtrak as well, making sure that they had appropriate staffing to get it up and running. We had hoped uh, it would even be sooner, but because of those staffing challenges, here we are in April, we're very glad it's open, but that was one of the challenging aspects. And that's just a broader issue in today's economy uh, that we're working very much on, whether it's workforce development, making sure that we have a pipeline to these good paying jobs. But staffing was part of this as well. How much was the cross-border issue uh, a factor in getting it uh, reinstated? Well, Canada was ready and willing and was excited to get this reopened earlier than today. Uh, part of my job, I'm co-chair of the Northern Border Caucus, we're in constant communication with Canadian counterparts, Canadian elected officials, and they were ready. So it really took us to push Amtrak on the U.S. side to make sure we got it up and running. There are still some restrictions in place. Are you urging the U.S. government and Canadian governments to get back in sync when it comes to the border policies? Canadians still can't come through a land crossing if they're not vaccinated. Yes, we are still working on that, and uh, that's been really a bipartisan effort from the Northern Border Caucus uh, to make sure that we're lifting all of those COVID mandates. One of the bills that we passed uh, that was um, that we passed out of the House almost unanimously was the lifting of the COVID emergency. To trying to get back to normal, that's important, but looking at the unique challenges we face on the northern border that are unique from the southern border. So uh, that's going to be really important and we're going to continue pushing for that. But it's part of it is the cross communication and this is something that this region understands so well is that we have close working relationships with our Canadian counterparts and we need to use that to get on the same page. Off topics? Any other questions on Amtrak. Okay, go ahead. Yes, so last week there was a school shooting in Nashville and multiple North Country schools. All right, we're here to cover the, uh, the Amtrak, and uh, that's, uh, that subject is over with, so we're going to head for our county legislature meeting.
be out here. Okay, take care, Chris. You go We'll use this photo taken by Chris Trombley to thank Judy Castine for being there with their camera to make sure that it was recorded for history. Thanks for covering the Amtrak arrival in the village of Rouse's Point on this April 3rd, 2023.